Hello and welcome back to the ROI channel, the channel that's obsessed with the scientific art, as I like to put it, uh, of return on investment. And today we're going to be taking a look at a very, very interesting investment opportunity, not for the faint hearted necessarily, uh, but one that I'm extremely interested in, in the iron ore space. So I've covered uh, Rio Tinto and Vale, we've made huge profits on Vale, and so um, I was looking to, to rotate more capital into the sector because I found this opportunity. So this is the stock that I was mentioning in the Vale video. The reasons why I sold it for great uh, great profits is because we've rotated that capital into Ferrexpo, okay? Uh, so a uh, little bit of a different format. We're gonna see how it goes today and let me know what you think of it in the comments comment section. If you haven't already liked and subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, please do so. I greatly appreciate the comments and the, the new subscribers and we're building a nice little community and that's exactly the way that I like it. Uh, so if you could do that for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. And having said that, let's get into it. So the Crassus investment formula, what do we look for in um, a Crassus investment portfolio, which is the publicly uh, available portfolio on eToro? We're looking for businesses with low debt, which we define as uh, either low net debt or um, net debt to EBITDA levels of three or less, generally speaking, unless we've got a really good reason, okay? Margin of safety in terms of the calculations that we use and in terms of the price relative to our estimates of the business's intrinsic value. We want sales growth, strong margins, free cash flow growth in particular, and share buybacks. If we can get those, we're very interested. Let's take a look. Revenue expected to come in 2.5 billion this year, so bump a year uh, last year and this year for the iron ore producers because um, the price was over $200 uh, dry metric ton. So <laughs> it was uh, just a great year. Things seem to have fallen off a cliff in terms of the Evergrande fiasco in China. And so I'll have a few comments to say around that. But over the 10 year period, uh, so 10 to 12 years, you've got to look at these uh, cyclical plays to adjust for the uh, vicissitudes of the price of the commodities which they sell. And so 3% is a reasonable top line growth. When you consider they've got 8% uh, EBITDA growth over that period, it means that they are able to grow their margins over good times and bad, which is very good. Market cap, 2.6 billion at time of recording. Enterprise value, 2.3 billion. The price, I have converted all these to US dollars, okay? So $4.40. Uh, but you'll see it trades actually on the London Stock Exchange, okay? So just for simplicity's sake and consistency's sake, I've converted and done all the work to US dollars. Shares, 587.7 million, flat on buybacks, so they had no uh, dilution, no buybacks. Dividend yield is uh, coming in at about 14% uh, at current levels if they can uh, continue their dividend, which I believe that they can. Not to say that they will, but they certainly can. Return on capital, 25% uh, is a long-term average. So very, very good for a, you know, a commodity play. They also, and this is extremely important, they have negative net debt, which means they have more cash on their balance sheet than they do outstanding liabilities. So super, super important to have a strong balance sheet. Uh, if you've got that and you've got upside from a, a commodities perspective and the business has leverage to the commodity price, you uh, you reduce the risk of your investment uh, by such a such a big margin. Okay, key points. It's a fully integrated iron ore place. So they're more concentrated in terms of the commodities which they sell, but uh, they have a, a, a really good integration system from, from go to woe, from pulling it out of the ground to, to selling it onto the, the end consumer. Uh, they are a pure play on iron ore, okay? So you, you do have concentration risk in terms of the commodity that they sell. They're a higher um, purity than Rio, BHP, and Vale. So they're at about 62%, I believe, whereas uh, for Expo is 65%. Two main mines and processing plant uh, plants in Ukraine. I am very big on Ukraine for a number of reasons. It does have its issues, but in uh, in terms of a, a macro standpoint, Eastern Europe in particular, Russia and Ukraine, uh, I think have a, a bright future. They seem to have the, uh, the most sensible governments and central banks uh, from what I can see. And that's not something <laughs> sensible and, and government is not something that I usually uh, put in the same sentence, but Eastern Europe are definitely showing us how things uh, could be done perhaps a little bit better in certain regards. Uh, they've got their own 
sport for goodness sake okay that they, they they own the race course okay from from start to finish as i said they own a port for transportation of their iron ore and they even own a fleet of ships upon which they can transport the ore huge uh, advantage competitive moat around the business no debt as i mentioned 3.2 billion in retained earnings so uh, as I went through with, uh, I believe, Rio and possibly Vale, when you're buying these uh, big producers, what I like to do to give a margin of safety is to value them based on their dividend and their expected dividend streamed into the future. And so you have to ask yourself, okay, last year the dividends were this. At you know today's price, that might be a huge yield of 14%. And that's all well and good. But if the company doesn't have the earnings to continue to pay that out, you're going to be... Um, you're going to be overpaying for the stock. This is not the case when it comes to Forexpo. They do have the retained earnings so that should the iron ore price uh, halve again uh, tomorrow, they should be able to continue to pay out that dividend until, the, um, until their EBITDA picks up from a, a higher commodity price. There are risks, of course. Main, <laughs> main risk, I think, is that the, the main shareholder uh, is a guy, Ukrainian guy, that owns... 50% of the company. Now, he's been arrested, uh, or there was a warrant put out for his arrest. I'm not sure what the current situation is, but I've just taken an extract here. A Ukrainian court is understood to be seeking the arrest of majority owner and former CEO of iron ore producer for Expo, Karachi Limited Company, former politician, Konstantin Shivago. Okay, so that <laughs> screams dodginess. On suspicion of embezzling funds from a bank of which he was the beneficial owner until it was liquidated in 2015. So not necessarily from his misdeeds happening when he was a CEO and misdeeds happening on Company Watch, although who knows with a guy that could do this sort of thing. But, um, you know, obviously a, a bit of a red flag. And so the, the market has not liked that at all and has sold it off. And if you know me, you know, I love situations where, uh, you know, people are telling me I'm crazy for looking at a given investment. You know, the more hated it is, the, the, the best price that you can get it at, providing that you're right on the, the upside for the future. And of course, the lower the price you pay, the higher your uh, expected returns in the future. Another risk is China's slowdown. This will be probably not a, a drastic um, short-term event. I think it'll be more drawn out over the next few decades, actually. I think China's population is uh, slowing. They're gonna have a lot of old people in, in 10 years and not many young people to produce and take care of them. More manufacturing production plants are moving away from China as a result of uh, certain things that have happened over the last few years. And they're starting to realize, hey, we better not have our supply chain so dependent on one nation, which is, is China. So diversifying out Vietnam, Indonesia, and so on and so forth. And I think that's a trend that will continue. There will be less demand for infrastructure in China. How long can they continue you know, building cities that no one lives in, roads that no one drives on, bridges that no one traverses, and so on and so forth. Of course, that reduces the, um, the demand for steel and hence the demand for iron ore. However, the Western uh, world has infrastructure that could really use a lot of upgrading. I remember, you know, I've been to California a lot of times and the roads there are disgraceful. Um, yeah, just the first, one of the first things I noticed was how bad the roads were. Anyway, the point is the West has a lot of infrastructure needs of itself. And so we should continue to see at least moderate uh, demand for infrastructure moving forwards. And you've got to get your steel from somewhere. And Forexpo is a, a really good, reliable producer with no debt and um, an integrated operating system from producing the, steel, the iron ore, excuse me, transfer, uh, transferring it and delivering it. Uh, so pretty hard to beat. Here's the price action over the last uh, dozen years or so. And so you can see uh, as all commodities, uh, commodity businesses are the cyclicalities uh, ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. The trick, of course, is to, you know, if you're good at timing, buy low and sell high, or short the business at the highs and, and buy it back at the lows, perhaps, is another way to look at it. Or you can take the um, the longer-term approach and say, well, look, I'm buying at a decent price based on the dividends. If it goes up, great. If it goes down, great. No worries. Uh, over the long term, I'm going to be kept safe from the dividend returns alone, and then eventually I'll get an upside kicker from the equity, and it will give you your your desired rates of return over time on an annualized basis.
Okay, let's look over the last five years uh, for Expo versus its competitors. So you've got Rio, which we also own because it's more diversified. Vale, which we have owned in the past and continue to like it, but we sold it at massive profits. And BHP, which is another good business. And for Expos, uh, as you can see, has handily outperformed them in terms of price action over the last five years. And okay, here's the projections short term into the next year. The way that I'm looking at this again is basically looking at the cash flows of the business because I don't know if we're really going to see multiple expansions. Uh, I don't think it's going to win any popularity contests over the next year or two, but eventually the market will uh, re rate it. And so, in any case, if we can get the returns we want um, based more or less purely from the cash flows, any uh, multiple expansion is a, an upside for us. So we've got our expected free cash flow, EBITDA, and earnings per share. And I've applied here very conservative multiples for each of those. As you can see, if we, we beat that, great. Uh, but if we were to get these multiples and those cash flows were to come uh, to fruition, these are the implied prices in the uh, third column here on the right. Okay, So we, we take a, an average and we get an average expected price next year of $6.27. Remember, I've done the currency conversion. There could be currency risk. Uh, the pound will likely strengthen against the dollar. They're raising interest rates, but I think that's less of a concern. If we look at that as an IRR, if we were to exit, then we'd get you know 1.43 times uh, our money on the upside, which would work out to be a 42% IRR. Okay, So think of that as an a proxy for annualized rate of return. So quite handy. I mean, a year and you, you make 42% on your money, uh, quite good. If that were to take two years to play out, okay, if who knows, if world production were to grind to a halt and demand also ground to a halt and it took an extra year or whatever, then we're looking at about a 19% IRR, which is still quite decent. However, here's the chart you've been waiting for, and this is, of course, valuing the company purely uh, from a dividend standpoint. So if we look at the annual dividend, I've given it a haircut because we had an extraordinary year last year. I don't think iron ore will go back to $200 a ton, but um, if we were to take a, a reasonable estimate of a, a conservative dividend moving forward, and what I've done here is I've said that that dividend over the next 10 years is only going to grow at 3% per annum, okay? So basically um, keeping in track with GDP of most nations, which is a very, very harsh estimate. And then from the 10 year onwards to grow at 15%, our target return is our required return as investors of 20%. And so here we plug in the expected dividends from the growth rates and the dividend input. And of course, what this all means at the end of the day, don't get confused, these are the expected dividends, our estimates of what we're likely to get paid out to us as shareholders. We want to achieve a 20% annualized rate of return. So we're discounting the future value and time risk of these cash flows by 20% and saying at what price or below can we buy the shares in order to achieve that return. Okay, and so we get a, a target price of $5.26. Okay, so we're trading well below that at the moment. So we have a margin of safety as investors. Uh, and I'm saying, okay, well, these are the likely uh, cash flows. If I can buy, if the max I can pay is $5.26 and it's trading in the fours, reasonable bet, I'm going to allocate some funds towards this particular stock. And so there's the verdict. Okay, I think it's a buy. Uh, low debt, no debt, margin of safety, sales growth, strong margins, free cash flow growth, which means that they can keep paying us nice dividends, special dividends, uh, or they can buy back more of their shares and we can get um, uh, our ownership of the company increasing over time as a result of those buybacks alone. So a lot to like about this company, uh, warts and all, okay? A lot of the, be the best investments have warts on them. So you gotta see past that and uh, that's the, I guess the logic that I'm running with in terms of this particular company is you know, not for everyone. And as always, you guys need to decide for yourselves, but this channel is just about me and my thoughts and, and what I'm doing. So there it is. This is one thing that I'm doing. I'm looking to build up a position to around about one and a half percent of assets under management. And the reason is that I'll also have one to one and a half percent of assets under management 
in Rio Tinto because they are a more diversified miner. This is more of a pure play, but it's a fully integrated play with no debt, with uh, you know just a ridiculously cheap valuation at the moment. And I think that the dividends alone can give me the return that I want. And so I'm, uh, I really have little downside, not no downside, but little downside, limited downside, and uh, a nice, uh, highly likely upside in this case. And so those are the reasons why I'm buying for Expo. And so I hope you enjoyed the, the little prezo today, as we say in Australia, <laughs> that's Australian for presentation. If you uh, like what you saw, feel free to check out the link below to the Toro, and you'll be able to see our portfolio. You'll see what we're buying, how we're buying it, um, and how everything's performing. So really great uh, platform. If you've got funds and you'd like to share the gains, have me do the hard work and you just uh, do the investment, all you gotta do is uh, press the copy button, add some funds, copy, and it will set up your account mimicking, uh, mirroring our portfolio. And so that's it guys. If you haven't liked and subscribed, appreciate you doing that. Thank you to all the new subscribers. We're building them up at a, a rapid rate. Any questions, leave them in the comments, guys, and I hope to see you in the next video. Disclaimer, as always, this channel is not advice. It's just me doing um, doing what I'm doing and sharing what I'm doing, giving my thoughts. I can be wrong just like anyone, so please don't take any of this as advice necessarily. You need to do your own due diligence and your own homework and take responsibility for the decisions that you make and the consequences that they may bring. Having said that, wishing you all the best, and I'll be back in another video shortly.